Thank you. And the next item of business today is consideration of Business Bureau Motion 7384 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick. On behalf of the Bureau setting out a business programme, I would ask any member who wishes to speak against the motion to say so now. I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move Motion 7384. Formally moved. Thank you. No member has asked to speak against the motion. The question is therefore that Motion 7384 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Thank you. The next item of business is consideration of Business Motion 7378 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Bureau on variation of standing orders in relation to First Minister's questions. I would ask any member who wishes to object to say so now. I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move Motion 7378. Moved. Thank you. No member has asked to speak against the motion. The question is that Motion 7378 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. And the first item of substantive business is topical questions. And we start with question number one from Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how many teacher vacancies there are. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. Presiding Officer, in 2016, the Scottish Government and COSLA worked together to develop a teacher vacancy survey seeking to provide high quality data from local authorities. The information was fed into the 2017-18 teacher workforce planning process. A further exercise is currently underway as part of the 2018-19 workforce planning process. We recognise that there are some local authorities experiencing challenges in filling vacancies. That is why we have taken the decisive action we have taken to recruit and retain teachers. We have increased the student in teacher intake targets for the sixth year in a row. We are setting targets to train teachers in the subjects where they are needed most. And we are investing over a million pounds from the Scottish Attainment Fund to develop new routes into the profession. Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I think the number that uh, has come out in recent days is that there are 500 teacher vacancies, which the Cabinet Secretary failed to uh, put in his answer. The reality is that excellent education starts with excellent teachers, so this number of vacancies is of concern to us all, but it can be no surprise given the falling pay in real terms, increasing workload, leading to retention issues. There's been much talk in recent days about lifting of the public sector pay cap. What steps is the Cabinet Secretary taking to make sure that teachers are amongst the first to benefit to stop the spiralling uh, situation of pay and conditions? Cabinet Secretary. First thing I'd say, President Officer, is that uh, I obviously recognise, as I did in my earlier answer, that there are challenges in teacher recruitment around the country. But even if we take Mr Johnson's figure at face value, that represents 1% of the teaching profession. 1% of the teaching profession. So we, we have to have a sense of perspective about the issues. And I was pleased when some of the survey information came out that local authorities made clear that they were optimistic that they would be able to close these vacancies um, uh, in the course of the, uh, the school term. Uh, we have, of course, seen as part of this a, a dramatic change in the employment of post-probationers, where in, when this government came to office, only 66% of post-probationers were in permanent or temporary employment, but that is now at 87% at the current period. In relation to the questions on public sector pay, I can assure uh, Mr Johnson that the dialogue is underway within the SNCT process to agree the teachers' pay round for this current school year. Um, it would be premature of me to make any judgments about that process, but I do assure him that the government is participating in that process along with the teaching trade unions and the local authorities. Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary did much to try and downplay the numbers, but the government's own papers show that it's going to take three years to fill this shortfall, and we know that we have 4,000 fewer teachers than we did in 2010. On the 31st of May, John Swinney came to the Education Committee and admitted that with hindsight, too many teacher training places had been cut. So with the benefit of hindsight, and with the, the knowledge that we have 500 teachers missing from our classrooms, what mistakes does he think that the Scottish Government have made in their stewardship of the teaching profession and workforce in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I return to my point to Mr Johnson about post-probationers, because his question makes my point for me. In 2007, 66% of post-probationers were in permanent or temporary employment, and opposition parties in this Parliament were demanding that this Government did something about that level of probationer employment. So we did. And we now have 87% of post-probationers in permanent or temporary employment. So we addressed the issue that members of Parliament were concerned about. Now, there was, of course, at that time, uh, more teachers than there were places for teachers to be employed in. 
Um, so the numbers of uh, the intake into initial teacher education was reduced into, to a relative comparatively lower levels in 2010-11. In 2010-11, 2,282 teachers were in, uh, recruited into initial teacher education. That figure now stands at 4,058 for this academic year. So that is what the government is doing, responding to the fact that we need to create opportunities for teachers to gain employment, training sufficient teachers to enter the teaching profession, and the reforms that I set out in June are designed to strengthen the profession and to strengthen the attractiveness of the uh, occupation of education uh, to more and more individuals in our country. Oliver Mundell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary will know from committee evidence that concerns have been raised about the accuracy of data on teacher numbers, specifically that data in relation to supply teacher numbers is patchy across local authorities. Can he therefore tell the Chamber what he's going to do about that problem? Cabinet Secretary. Well, fundamentally, it's for individual local authorities to uh, manage their resources, to employ the, the teachers that they require to deliver education. I was in Mr Mundell's constituency yesterday. I visited Dumfries High School. I was very pleased to see the strength of educational provision in Dumfries High School. I was very pleased to hear from Dumfries and Galloway Council that they've started this, um, this school year with a full complement of teachers in the schools of Dumfries and Galloway which I warmly congratulate Dumfries and Galloway Council on achieving. Now, of course, the supply pool needs to be managed, and I'll be, I'm taking steps actively to ensure that we have a strong supply pool so that when the inevitabilities of illness and other factors take their course during the year, we have adequate supply cover in our schools. But I encourage members of Parliament to see the progress that has been made by the significant increase in initial teacher education intakes that we have delivered, which have strengthened the recruitment into the teaching profession and have ensured that in some parts of the country we have a sufficient supply of uh, teachers, but we're working with others to ensure these issues are addressed in other parts of the country. And Ross Greer. Thank you. To address the issue of teacher shortages, the Scottish Government have opened the door to fast-track training for teachers, including potentially the highly controversial Teach First course. But what evidence have the Scottish Government gathered that the length of traditional, highly regarded initial teacher education courses is in fact the issue? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, the, what the Government has done has been to insist that the high standards that are expected for the recruitment of teachers into the teaching profession are maintained. And I give Parliament an absolute commitment on that point. So all of the new routes into teaching that have been validated have not been validated by me. They've been validated by the guardians of this process who are the General Teaching Council of Scotland. And any course that comes forward, and I hear Mr Greer speculating about possible courses that may come forward, and it is speculation, I might add, any course that comes forward will have to be validated by the General Teaching Council of Scotland and it will have to have an academic partner as part of that process. And the objective of what the government is trying to do, and I met some of these students myself at the University of Strathclyde, who are people who've had a career in uh, other areas of activity, who have an interest in STEM teaching, and because of the refinements that have been made to the course by the University of Strathclyde, validated by the General Teaching Council, those individuals have been prepared to change from their other careers into teaching, and I welcome them for doing that. They will still be put through rigorous uh, training and education, but what it's guaranteeing is a stronger flow of teachers into our classroom, and particularly addressing the areas of shortage that we have in the STEM subjects. Thank you. We move on to question number two from Edward Mountain. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to tackle the reported shortages of NHS radiologists. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robertson. Well, under this government, the number of consultants with a specialty of radiology working in NHS Scotland has increased by 41.9% to 317.2 whole time equivalent. We've also enhanced the supply of doctors to fill radiology training posts with 26 new training places over the past four years, an increase of 20%. And this will be augmented by a further increase of 10 radiology training places for 2018, agreed by the Shape of Training Transition Group on the 24th of August. Supply will improve from 2018 onwards as an increased investment in radiology training numbers begins to produce an increased output. 
With regard to NHS Highland, the Scottish Government is working with the Board to support improved performance of the radiology service, and the Board is already taking action as part of this work. The Chief Executive of NHS Scotland, the Chief Medical Officer and the Director of Health Workforce recently met with radiologists from NHS Highland. I'll also be meeting with the Royal College of Radiologists later this month to discuss their concerns. Edward Mountain. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for those figures. Now, let me give you some figures in return. On the back of letters that I've received from the Department of Medicine and General Surgery at Ragmore, the situation is critical, signed by over 50 single people in there. NHS Highland undertakes about 167,000 imaging examinations annually, a 250% increase on 10 years ago but there's four less full-time radiologists at Ragmore than there was then. 50% less staff than there are in Lothian. NHS Highland are sitting on some 8,000 unreported films. It's proved impossible to recruit more radiologists despite the board's direct input for the last three years, and there has already been one resignation this year. The result is that doctors say that there are unacceptable delays to elective surgery and emergency surgery and reporting. Cabinet Secretary, do you think those figures are acceptable? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, no, I don't, and that's why this uh, report and review, which was uh, commissioned by the Scottish Government along with NHS Highland into ra radiology services, was produced last month, which will form the basis of a, an action plan to address these problems. I'm very happy to provide Edward Mountain with a copy of this if he's not already seen it. But of course he did in his question uh, touch on the problem here and that is being able to recruit to radiology within NHS Highland. It is very clear that there are some specialties in some parts of Scotland that are extremely hard to recruit to. So a number of actions are underway including the work set out in this review but also for example to make sure that the, uh, the International Medical Training Initiative Initiative. NHS Highland are putting forward radiology posts as part of that. They're also working with NHS Education for Scotland to work to help the board to identify where other radiology trainees may be located, including through joint appointments with other boards and teaching hospitals to ensure that they achieve the required educational experience and make those posts more attractive. So I can say to Edward Mountain that everything that uh, can be done will be done, but I do reiterate that across Scotland we have seen uh, additional radiology consultant posts, uh, nearly uh, over 40% more, and indeed over 20% more training posts. But there are certain parts of the country and certain specialties where more work has to be done in order to fill those posts, and that work is underway in Highland. Edward Mountain. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. I think, uh, if I quote the Board, they said there's been significant investment in time and energy and commitment by the Board over the last three years. Indeed, Cabinet Secretary, I think you had a personal visit some two and a half years ago from radiologists from the Highlands alerting to you, you to the problem. You've had two and a half years to solve it. The Board's had over three. It appears that you can't solve it, and nor can the Board of NHS Highland. Will you step down and make way for those who can? And will you do the honourable thing so that the people in the Highlands can get good service? Cabinet Secretary. Can I say to Edward Mountain, I don't think that's really worthy of him. Him and I have had very constructive uh, engagement across this Parliament and I would hope that that would continue. I have set out in my initial answer and in the follow-up answers all of the work that is going on to address this problem. There is no magic wand here or magic bullet or whatever else you can describe to sort this issue. It is difficult to recruit to radiology within Highland and other areas because it's a specialty that is difficult to recruit to generally but particularly in remote and rural areas. That is why the action that is underway in this report here and all the other action that I have said, looking at the International Recruitment Initiative, making sure that Highland have these posts there at the top of the, the, the medical training initiative, I think that will help uh, to, to uh, bring people into Highland because it is something new and it has worked in other areas. Also in terms of the joint appointments with other boards, that has worked for other specialties and that is something that Highland are looking at to make those posts more attractive. Uh, I'm ha happy in a constructive way to, to make sure Edward Mountain is kept abreast of these developments if he would find that helpful. Thank you. I would just encourage all members to keep their questions and the answers tight, please. Claire Hockey. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I'd like to refer members to my register of interests. Uh, last week, the Financial Times revealed that doctors had been leaving NHS England at a rate of more than 400 a month, with the vote to leave the EU exacerbating shortages. Would the Cabinet Secretary agree that the Tory approach to Brexit is hindering efforts to ensure that the NHS is staffed for the future? Oh, On radiologists, please, Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, uh, Claire Hawhey makes a very important point because whether it's radiology or other specialties, we can ill afford to lose any opportunity to recruit here from the EU to these posts. And it's Absolutely. interesting that Edward Mountain completely didn't mention any of that within his, his uh, question. And of course, it is an issue that every health board, including NHS Highland, have raised with me as a deep, deep concern. And that's why it's so important that a message goes out that EU nationals are very welcome to work here, the ones we have here already and the ones who may wish to come and make their home here in Scotland. They're very welcome. And Anas Sarwar. But Cabinet Secretary, the truth is this isn't just a problem with radiologists and in the Highlands. It's part of a wider crisis in our NHS to recruit. We have consultant vacancies up now at 500 published today. We have nurse and midwifery vacancies up to 3,200 published today. And that's now directly impacting on patient care. We were promised a comprehensive workforce plan before the summer recess. Instead, we got part one of a three-part plan. Isn't it time we had a comprehensive plan and we had a demonstration from this Cabinet Secretary that she understands the concerns of the NHS workforce, she understands the concerns of patients waiting for treatment, and that she demonstrates she actually has have some idea about the problems in our NHS? A wider question, but a tighter answer, please, Minister. OK, well... Uh, Thank you, Anna Sarwar, for that, that question. Uh, can I say, first of all, the reason that uh, the workforce plan is in three parts is because the second part was asked to be delayed by COSLA because of the elections, so that they oh. could jointly uh, make sure that the workforce plan is jointly uh, published uh, later uh, on. And the third part, of course, dealing with primary care and the GP workforce, would be silly to have published that when we're in the midst of a contract negotiation with the BMA, where workforce is part of that negotiation. So that workforce plan will be published at the end of that negotiation. That makes sense. Everybody knows it makes sense. Perhaps Anna Sarwar may also agree it makes sense. A comprehensive workforce plan has already been published and will be followed up by the rest of the plan in order to take forward these issues. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary.